Good day everyone. Today we'll be discussing facial nerve examination. So the facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve and um, a nerve that's commonly tested in the exams. So it's important that you know how to demonstrate uh, the facial nerve examination. So key things to note in any neurological examination is to start with inspection. Inspection is very, very important in any neurological examination. So for facial nerve demonstration, the first thing you want to do after cleaning your hands, greeting the examiners, and also telling the patient what you want to do is to, one, check for a facial asymmetry. So you want to stand a bit far away from the patient and try to look if there's any you know, loss of nasolabial fold on one side or if the angle of the mouth is evident to one side. So you always start with inspection, checking for facial asymmetry. And the second thing to do is also to check for any rashes around the ears because of a condition called ramsey on syndrome. So at times, patients with epizoster would have come down with a syndrome, which is called ramsey Hunt, in which they have a facial nerve palsy and the vascular rashes, usually around the external acoustic meatus or the mastoid, at times even in the palate. So after that, they, what you need to tell the patient is to check the front, is, what you need to do is to you know, check for the frontal belly of occipital frontalis muscle. So here you tell the patient to raise the eyebrows or to look up and you want to see the uniform wrinkling of the forehead. Then uh, the next thing you like to do is to check the orbicularis oculi. So orbicularis oculi are basically the muscles that close the eyes tight. So you ask the patient to close the eyes tight and should not allow you to open it. So if the facial nerve is affected and the side in which the facial nerve is affected, the person will not be able to shut the eyes tight. And at times you see this upward high rolling while trying to close the eyes tight, which is called bell phenomenon. Then the next thing you like the patient to do is to puff the cheeks for you. And because if there is in, in a situation where there's facial nerve problem, the person will not be able to puff the cheeks on that side because the bucinator muscle is weak. At the same time, may ask the patient to whistle, then followed by asking the patient to tell the patient, show me your teeth or bear the teeth. So it's not clench the teeth, because if you say clench the teeth, you're talking about cranial nerve 5. These are the muscles of mastication. So you want the patient to just show you the teeth, and while doing that, you're paying attention to the nasal labia fold and also the angle of the mouth. So the angle of the mouth will be deviated to the normal side, and the nasal labia fold on that side will also be very, very prominent. And after that, it's important you can ask patient to whistle for you, and not everybody can do that. So it should not be used in isolation to see whether someone has a facial nerve problem or not. But that's one of the things you want to check for, and it's also a function of the bucinator muscle. Then, after that, you can ask patient to contract, you know, the platysmal muscle as if they want to shave, and you try to look whether the muscles are contracting or not. Then followed by that, you want to check for the nerve to stapedius integrity. So you kind of clap your fingers you know, behind, the patient, behind the patient's ears and ask the patient if the sound is louder in one ear than the other. So to complete your examination, it's always good to tell examiners you like to do three things. One, you tell the examiner would like to check for taste in the anterior to third of the tongue. So the taste in the anterior to third of the tongue checks for the caudate in panning nerve. And next, you will tell the examiner you like to check for the Cornea reflex. So the cornea reflex, the afferent is going to have five, specifically the ophthalmic division of going to have five, and the efferent is going to have seven, which, you know, which shut the eyes. So cornea reflex is something you also tell the examiner you like to do. And finally, you want to tell the examiner they also want to check, you know, other accompanying cornea nerves. So you want to check for cornea V1 and V2, and that's your ophthalmic and your maxillary using your fine touch, all right, or cutting wool. Um, then you want to check for cranial 6, ask the patient to follow your eyes and see whether they can bury the, 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 the cornea. Um, and also cranial kind of 8, whispering to the patient's ears, you know, closing, checking one ear at a time. They have to close, using their finger to close dragos, then you whisper into their ear and see whether they can hear what to say close to them. So that's cranial kind of 8. And the main reason why you are checking for the accompanying cranial kind of is because cranial kind of V1, V2, that's of thermic and maxillary, six and eight alongside with facial nerve all meet at the side bellopontine angle so if you have a tumor there it can affect you know the ophthalmic the maxillary the six and eight and will help you to localize the lesion i'll be demonstrating that in the video today thank you so i'll be demonstrating the facial nerve um, examination now 
So the first thing to do is always to clean your hands as expected in any examination station. And after that, you know, after you might have greeted the examiner, so you want to tell the patient what you'll be doing. So good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Ido, and I would like to examine your face today. Is that, is that okay? Yes. So I'll be examining the nerves of your face, and I'll be asking you to carry out some you know, instructions. If that's fine. Can I proceed? Yes, you can. Okay. So um, the first thing to do is always to step back and check for any facial asymmetry. So look if there's any facial deviation or probably loss of mesolabia fold on one side. And after that, you also want to check for any rash or rashes uh, around the ears to rule out ramsey on syndrome, which you can have um, a zosteriform rash, like vesicular rashes around the ears. Then you have friction, you're going to stabilize the patient's head, so I'm going to put my hand on your head, that's fine. Yeah, I want to follow my finger, please. Yeah, that's good. So you can see the uniform wrinkling of the forehead. Then close your eyes tight, don't let me open it. So you're going to tight, tight, don't let me open it. Okay, so if there is facial nerve affectation, especially if there's a lower motor neuron lesion, so the face on that side, you'll be, one will be able to open it, right? Telling you that the entire nerve of that face is affected. So at the time, it's possible to just see the eyeball ruling upwards while the patient tries to close the eyes, and that's the girl's phenomenon. Then, ask the patient to pop the cheeks, can you pop your cheeks for me? Okay, so the patient will try to pop the cheeks. So in this case, it seems the right cheek is well popped out, so meaning that the postnatal muscle here is intact and probably weak on the side. So you may well just want to press and see air, whether air will leak. But on this side, it's difficult. And on the weak side, you also see maybe air leaking from the angle of the mouth. Then, yes, especially too, can you try to whistle for me? Okay, so not everyone can do that. So you can do, use that in isolation. Then ask the patient, can you show me your teeth? So show teeth. So you see the fact that the angle of the mouth, they're based on the normal side. So telling you that the side of the face is weak. And what you're checking for is the levator angular oris. That's the muscle that pulls the angle of the mouth there. Then it's also important checking the platysma muscle. Can you tense the muscle of your neck? Can you do this for me? All right, so can you do this? So you see the muscles of the neck, you know, quite tense. Uh, that does, you know, checks the integrity of the platysma. Uh, then, ask the patient to, you need to tap your fingers, you know, behind the patient's ears and tell the patient if it's louder in one ear than the other. Is it louder in the particular ear? Okay, so if there's a damage to nerve stapedios, it should be louder in that particular ear. Then finally, it's important to tell the examiner that you also like to check for taste in the anterior to sort of the tongue. And likewise, you want to check the cornea reflex. So, and finally, you want to check for the accompanying cranial nerves. So check for the accompanying cranial nerves, you can check for cranial nerve six. Can you follow my finger, finger to that side with your head still, and can you follow it on this side as well. So, and you can also check for the fine touch using cotton wool I'm um, checking the sensory modality in the V1 as of thumb area and also in the V2 area as well. So finally, you want to check for cochlear nerve 8 and that's the vestibule cochlear nerve. So what you need to do is that you go to the back of the patient and then close mount pressure on the tragus of the other ear. Then from the back, you want to whisper maybe a name or a number into the ears. 6. What number did I say? Then you close the other ear as well, then go to the back and also whisper into the other ear. So this is just to check for the integrity of cranial eight. And finally, you thank the patient, clean your hands, and that concludes the end of the examination. Thank you.